For thousands of years, First Nations peoples have walked on this land. As we gather, we acknowledge that we stand on the traditional territory of the Kalaman Nation. May we live with respect, peace, and friendship on this land. Well, good day, and it is a good day. And I have some good news. The Everyone Deserves a Smile campaign is well underway. We have received a lot of items, but we still need more. And we're looking for size extra large men's, um, we're looking for socks and mittens and, and uh, toques and scarves. And for women, size medium. Uh, and the same items with, with scarves and toques and, and mittens and socks. And try to get, if you're knitting, try to get some material that has some wool in it. I think that helps them uh, during the rainy seasons and whatnot. So yeah, the campaign is well on its way. Um, it's wonderful that uh, I think it was Christine Boyd and, and uh, her granddaughter Drew made a beautiful box that uh, you will see out front, uh, um, out by the, the office door there. And uh, that's where you can drop off any of the items that uh, you're collecting or you may have for the bags. And we're looking at making 200 bags this time. So yeah, it's, it's really exciting that we're part of this uh, wonderful campaign because everyone does deserve a smile. So I pray that you have some good news today. Let us begin by lighting the Christ candle from the candle of murdered and missing women and girls and two-spirited and now men and boys. our call to worship. Behold, loving God, these people are your people. At your calling we have gathered. By your leading we have arrived at this place and time. As you have promised, your presence is with us. And we seek your renewal and rest. Make yourself known to us, holy love. Come, divine life. Be with us as we worship together. And in our prayers today, let us remember um, Amanda uh, Farvolden and Lynn McCann as they travel and support little Allison, Addison, who is going for surgery to remove a brain term, tumor this week. So let us keep them all in our prayers. Holy One, even though we have not always been aware, we know you have been with us along the journey of our lives. We have not always recognized your presence, but we thank you for your abiding love. Your glory is all around us. Your mercy has seen us through. Your goodness is our strength and our renewal. And we thank you for the abundance in which we live and move and have our being. We pray today for people who remain on the journey and feel alone along the way. We pray for those who seek your face in times of surgery, especially we send prayers for Addison. May she feel your healing presence intimately. We pray for all who suffer under the powers and principalities of this world, who have been treated as collateral damage in a battle for loyalty to false gods. We pray for our planet, for your true face all around us. Help us not only to see you clearly in all of its wonder, but to remember our commitment as stewards of your lands, your seas, your air, and your creatures. Guide us in our efforts to care and tend to your world. We 
We pray that you will help us always to see your face beaming at us in every face of humanity we encounter. Show us your anguish as well as your delight, your struggles as well as your strengths, your discouragement as well as your resolve, your sadness as well as your love. And in all of these, help us to know you and your grace more perfectly. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught. For God is our mother and God is our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, let us listen to the song from Voices United, number 595, We Are Pilgrims. Or you may want to sing along if you know the song. Our scripture reading is from Isaiah chapter 45 verses 1 to 7. God chooses Cyrus to make Israel free. This is what God said to Cyrus, a Gentile and foreign king, selected to defeat Babylon and free Israel to return home. I took you by your right hand to help you defeat nations, to strip other kings of their power, and to open city gates that will not be closed again. I will go in front of you and make the mountains flat. I will break the city gates of bronze and cut the iron bars on the gates. I will give you the wealth that is stored in secret places. I will give you those hidden treasures. Then you will know that I am God, the God of Israel, who calls you by name. I do this for my servant Jacob, I do it for my chosen people, Israel. Cyrus, I am calling you by name. You don't know me, but I know you. I am God, the only God. There is no other God except me. I put your clothes on you, but still you don't know me. I am going, I am doing this so that everyone will know that I am the only God. From the east to the west, people will know who I am and that there is no other God. I made the light and the darkness. I bring peace and I cause trouble. I do all these things. The word as we understand it today. And a reading from the present is an excerpt from 365 Tao Daily Meditations. And this is called Attachment. The monk shaved his head as a symbol of renunciation but now he goes nowhere without his little cap. It's funny to see someone who says that he is a renunciate, that's someone who rejects something as invalid, call childishly for his few meager possessions. Why renounce the world when you really cannot? 
Before you cut your hair, ask yourself if you can afford to give up your attachments. Before you give up your freedom, ask yourself if you can submit, submit to mona, monastic order. Before you say that you are spiritual, ask yourself if you can give up worldly desires. I am not trying to make fun of monks here. I am observing that every path in life has its own sacrifices and its own hardships. Before you embark on a path, search yourself thoroughly and investigate the path completely. Then you will dispel misgivings. You will also reduce the chance of hypocrisy. Whoever you are, live your life completely. If you are a plumber, be the best plumber. If you are a saint, be the best saint. If you are common, be common. If you are extraordinary, be extraordinary. People only err when they try to be who they are not. And our song is from More Voices, number 161, I Have Called You By Your Name. Let us listen or sing along. is called An Exile Coming Home by Joyce Rupp. I've learned it is essential, beneficial, and indispensable to stand up to the secret power another wields over you. The one who's intent on ruining your life, who manages to convince you that your whole self depends on the welfare of the one clutching you in the heavy grasp of false ownership. The only way to be freed from deathful constraint is to turn around and face it, march right up to the constriction, look it boldly in the eye without a trace of surrender and send it away with your resurrected self-worth. Let us pray. Lover of justice, you set us on a path to freedom marked by the signposts of your goodness and mercy. Even when we fall short, you remain faithful, inviting us into right relationship. Help us to live as your people, that we may be the witness to justice and freedom you would have us be. Amen. Well, I must admit that I am a fan of the singer-songwriter Chris Christopherson. 
His words are very poetic and meaningful. The line from his song, Me and Bobby McGee, freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose, and nothing ain't worth nothing, but it's free, is very thought-provoking. Mr. Christofferson is saying that freedom equals nothing left. In other words, we are free only when we give up everything that we cling to. We enjoy life in a country known for its freedoms. And we have had many liberties in Canada, and they include freedoms such as mobility, assembly, religion, the press, association, opinion, and expression, just to name a few. But were we or are we really free? For some, we are held captive by our possessions. We have this false belief that our identity is based on how much stuff we have or how expensive they are. We can also be held captive by identifying with our career or the amount of money we earn. We can be held captive by others speaking to us in a condescending manner, allowing our self-worth to be deflated. And what about being held captive by our children's successes? A lot of unfair burden is placed on them to succeed in all they are involved. So that, so that we parents can brag and look good. These mindsets create a class system which enables judgments and encourages racism. We can define our, for ourselves what it means to be free. We can let go of the stuff that confines us, appreciate your career and education as a way to serve with love. We can find strength in knowing who and whose we are so that we are not influenced by others' superior attitudes. And encourage and support your, our children in their ch life choices and let them know that mistakes are important because that's how we learn. We may be somewhat like those Israelites in exile, especially in these pandemic times. We now have necessary limitations placed on us to keep others and ourselves safe. The COVID-19 does not discriminate. It treats us all equally. The politician and the beggar, the doctor and the waiter, the lawyer and the homemaker, the filmmaker and the personal care worker are all treated the same. I have come to the conclusion that freedom is an abstract thought, an intangible concept. It's a feeling. We can be free locked in a prison, in isolation, or in a convent cell. If we are not clinging to stuff, to people, to positions, then we have freedom. I wonder what you have to let go of in order to be free. This week, take some time to consider those things that hold you captive and think of ways you can let them go, if only mentally, so that you will live in freedom. Our song is Voices United, number 575, I'm Gonna Live So God Can Use Me. Let us listen, sing along. I'm gonna live so God can use me.
So don't forget this week to pray for Addison. Hopefully her surgery will be a success and may God be with her. And also remember, keep knitting and donating to Everyone Deserves a Smile. That campaign is so important for people in our community and we helped it make a success last year. Now our blessing. A higher spirit rules and has set the world firmly in place. It won't be shaken. Let the cosmos celebrate. Let the earth rejoice. Let the sea and everything in it roar. Let the countryside and everything in it celebrate. Let the trees of the forest shout with joy. We have faith and hope that the world will be set right. Justice and freedom will be established among the people. Until we gather again, go in peace.